everybody. Welcome to the Stock Car Spectacle. I'm Ian Shortson. I'm Tom Hoblin. And we're going to get right into our Atlanta review. It was a wild weekend. It was one for the history books. Tom, just so amazing. We all had our doubts about this reconfiguration of Atlanta Motor Speedway, but the Cup Series has been killing it there, putting on an amazing show year after year. For sure. I mean, Dale Jr. said it last year that this was the ticket to get if you were trying to pick one. And Sunday specifically showed why. Um, and now you got all these people like, should we do this to other tracks? And first of all, at least calm down for a second, but we should do it to one other track. We should have left Atlanta the same. But you know, th that's that's the old guard. We can we can revel about this race all we want. Sunday was fantastic, but there's still questions about whether or not we should be doing this in the first place. Totally agreed. But before we get into Atlanta, let's talk our diecasts of the week. Tom, what you got for us? All right. So in honor of a, a tiny bushwhacking victory, um, I figured we're going to Vegas. I gotta pull up my Vegas boy in an old bushwhacking car, the Xfinity 18. Uh, and this was pre-rowdy when we just had NOS rowdy edition. So right? pre-rowdy, post-rowdy, rip rowdy, energy and uh, go Kyle Busch. Hell yeah, man. I love those NOS schemes when you run them. For sure. And, it, and that rowdy NOS flavor mm -hmm. was absolutely delicious. It was, too. it was fantastic. It was great. Yeah. All right, so for my die cast of the week, this is actually one I just got for my birthday. I uh, mm -hmm. got it from my in-laws. It's Dale Jr.'s uh, late model that he ran at Florence Motor Speedway last year. Wow. An absolute beauty. I've never had a late model die cast before. And man, I love this thing. Just absolute beauty. Going throw back, throwing it back to his father's Bass Pro car. Um, yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, I I need more late model diecasts. These things are beautiful. Not to draw attention away from that one, but I also see your uh, Kyle Busch California win. Yeah, I circle. actually super cool. Just like picked that. it up at Target today. I saw it and I was like. I was there for it. It was mm -hmm. on my birthday. I, I got to do it. I got to get that one. I'm looking for that one. That one, the beautiful blue Lucas Oil scheme is excellent. Oh, yeah. They they killed it with that paint scheme. Mm -hmm. And what yeah, what a great car to win in your first race with your new team. Alrighty, so let's get into our top stories and the big <laughs> one. Noah Gregson and Ryan Priest have been docked 35 driver points and owner points for the roof air deflectors not in compliance with NASCAR. NASCAR has told these teams multiple, multiple, multiple times that you cannot add anything to this car. You cannot do your own little thing. Just stick with the manual that we gave you. But Stuart Haas Racing is going to do Stuart Haas Racing things and just cheat, 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 cheat. That's what they do. I had to live with it being a Kevin Harvick fan with him getting DQ'd so many goddamn times. And now we're going to do it with the Noah. They're they're desperate. I, I mean... Yeah. And who knows, again, we saw this with uh, a couple times last year, but the one last year with uh, Briscoe, I believe, where they left like a filler piece on one of the air ducts, like it was definitely not even supposed to be there. Like, is there a, is this another quality control issue or are they trying to cheat? That's, I guess that's the big question with Stuart Haas Racing now. They say they're turning a new leaf, but this is not getting off on a good start that they want to turn a new leaf. So I devastating. Um, and it's not, it was what, how many points was it? Did you say 35 points? So that so, will drop yeah. Priest to 36 in points and he has mm -hmm. zero points. And Noah Gregson has been dropped to 43rd in points with negative six points. So this yeah. is awful it's way to start the season. It's rough. I mean, 35 points, it's a race in the hole of a, a good race. Yep. A contended a stage points and finish in the top 10 race. Like, that's with Stuart Haas already behind the eight ball. Now you're going to throw this at them again. I mean, we, it's going to be a wash, rinse, repeat of last year. It seems unfortunately. Yeah. We'll see if they learn with the rest of the season coming up, but that's not it for the cheating going on this weekend. One that I have never heard of before. Joey Logano and his team decided to give him webbed gloves so he could so when he puts his hand out it'll get a little bit more arrow kind of change uh, things up and nascar saw that no 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 they gave him a pass through penalty start in the back and now they're finding him ten thousand dollars 
uh, for a glove safety violation. So, Tom, I have never seen this before in NASCAR. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of the great things about NASCAR is these guys will find anything they can to gain an advantage. The safety violation understanding of the rule is uh, laughable to me, where it's like uh, it's not unsafe to anything, um, but since they modified the glove and this, that, and the other, you wonder they're just they're getting them on a technicality they obviously think it's enough of a performance advantage or the or shady enough for him to try it that they're they're going to get him to stop before they go uh honestly brilliant and again dude the dude stat on the pole for the daytona 500 he sat second this week so it might have worked it might have been working and it won't happen again yeah, I mean, we know the saying in NASCAR, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. And then no. they're, they're just trying every single way to just mm-hmm. sit under NASCAR's red flag. But nope, NASCAR caught him. And uh, yeah, serving a uh, pretty fine uh, penalty there. And but, uh, uh, they, no points, no points, which was interesting. Yep. Um, it's because he didn't Joey, use it in race. Right, right, for sure. Um, and it was funny, like the, I think Fox did a great job showing it in the pre pre-race broadcast about explaining what they they went back for they found the clip they're like look at that webbing um but he didn't use in the he had red gloves in the race he was wearing black gloves in qualifying um but i think honestly dodged a couple bullets with this one joey logano did he's been running very well but he's 18th in points or he's got 18 points i believe not 18th I'm not sure exactly where he is. So he runs well, he's running up front and he's getting wrecked out and not scoring any points in these first two races. So that's another person who didn't need a points penalty. And I think he got away with one. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, he scathed away, especially, you know, we'll get more into it with that early Mm -hmm. caution coming out, helping him. Um, But that's not it with fines and penalties coming out this weekend. We also had at the end of the Xfinity series race, J.J. Yaley's Xfinity Series crew chief, Jason Miller, came up to Kyle Weatherman and started attacking him, put him in a headlock, and they had to get him away from the driver. Um, absolutely insane. Usually it's just the drivers going at it, not the crew chiefs going at the drivers. That's a that's a pretty rare one, but, hey, I love it. That's how pumped up everyone gets in NASCAR is that even the crew chiefs will, will say something and do something. Yeah, I was seeing on Twitter about, people wondering about like the guy wearing pants when I had no clue what the heck they were talking about. And then I saw the video and it was a classic NASCAR fight. Somebody got a shove in and then it was just a pile of people pulling each other apart. So yep. it's interesting for sure, but I don't think it's something we need to keep too much. It's super speedway race and these teams are trying to save money. And if they're getting dumped, they're getting, they're losing money. So yep, that's what happens. But yep. Jason Miller will be suspended for the next two races for the Xfinity series. So, yeah, that team yeah. will have to find someone else, but I, I don't think it'll help them that much. Um, so, speaking of the Xfinity Series, Hendrick Motorsports has also announced their schedule for their number 17 drivers for this season, and they're going to be kicking it off at Phoenix Raceway with William Byron. Uh, it's going to be Coda with Kyle Larson, Darlington, William Byron. Uh, I think they're just looking for an easy win there because he won the Southern 500 last year or the yeah. early, the spring race, whatever the good year for yeah. uh, Charlotte is going to be chase Elliott Sonoma. We got Boris said back in that car coming <laughs> back, making an attempt. I know he didn't get the race in it last year uh, with qualifying. I think that got rained out, right? Yeah. Something yeah. like that. So he just didn't get a shot to go, which yep. sucks. So he's getting another but... opportunity and we know him. He is the road course ringer from back in the day. And yeah, we'll see what he can do in the 17. Sure. It's a fast car and he's a good driver. So I'm excited to see what Boris can do. Yeah. And Kyle Larson on the, the only thing I saw about this was Kyle Larson retweeted the press announcement and they made all the drivers look the same height. Yeah. Picture. He's like, shout <laughs> out guys. Thanks for that. He's like the <laughs> tallest guy in the stack for once uh, in his life. So a little right. bit of fun there. <laughs> We got uh, New Hampshire with Alex Bowman, Chicago Street Course with Kyle Larson, Pocono will be William Byron, Darlington will be Chase Elliott, and they're going to end it at Watkins Glen with William Byron before the Xfinity Series Mm. playoffs begin. So, yeah, pretty interesting. It looks like that Kyle Larson is going to be doing most of 
the road courses here. Um, I guess he needs a little bit more help. I don't know. I think the guy's pretty good on these tracks, but I, I think they're just looking for good wins for these drivers, easy wins. Um, yeah, seat time is seat time. So yeah. you want to give, if you have the opportunity, you have the means to prepare a car and give them a couple races. Why not? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, look out for Hendrick Motorsports in the Xfinity Series this year. They're going to be taking away trophies from the little little guys. So, <laughs> yeah, Kyle Busch, he hasn't even announced any uh, Xfinity Series races this year. So far, it's just going to be trucks with Spire. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if he'll be too interested. Like you said, he, well, I, I mean, a couple of years ago, he retired from the Xfinity Series. He came back to run some colleague equipment, but now colleagues got some other guys in the pipeline and track houses mixed in there and so it's just that's a weird stack up so i don't know if we're gonna see too much of uh of kyle bush in the xfinity series but i'm happy to watch him runs for spire it's, yeah it's good good equipment there hey, wait. i think i hear tornado sirens god damn it oh well hold on i can look at my i house. hear tornado sirens i'm gonna get off and i'll text you when we'll get back on okay sounds All good right, bye All right, and we're back after a brief tornado warning. So let's get into it, into Atlanta. Uh, we started off with the truck series with the doubleheader on Saturday. We had Daniel Dye leading the field to green, and Christian Eckes won stage one. Uh, he's just got that momentum still from last season, uh, picking up where he left off. And, yeah, I think he's going to have another great season. This kid's just a great driver. One of the yeah, more mature sure. drivers in the truck series. For sure. And there, there's just not much out there ahead of him stopping him, you know. So just competition-wise. Absolutely. And then Thad Moffat just showing off that petty family talent, uh, not able to clear himself in front of Jake Garcia and wrecking himself and almost wrecking the field behind him. Uh, Thad Moffat, man, this guy just continues to surprise me, uh, year after year. That that's, I, I don't have much to say on that one. <laughs> He's just, it's just the new team new in a new spot. They're all figuring it out. It's a super speedway race. Yeah, that it is. And Jack Wood basically did the same exact thing, uh, wrecked himself, uh, into the front stretch grass, took, uh, took off his splitter uh ruining his race so kind of leaving off where we were with the truck series last year it was a wreck fest at daytona it was a wreck fest at atlanta it's gonna be a rough year for the fab shop guys yeah i, I think that's just coming with these two super speedway type races and whatnot and the, the issue with atlanta and these young guys is that it's it is a Daytona Talladega, but on a micro scale. So everything is going to happen faster and whatnot. And these, these dudes just don't expect it yet. Um, and so that's probably why we're going to see a lot of these incidents. I'm just excited for both this and the Xfinity race to get to Vegas and spread them out a little bit, give the guys some elbow room and balance it out that way. Exactly. All right. And then Kyle Busch won stage two, and this is where he just picked it up and, uh, Bailey Curry, we had his roof flying off. Um, haven't really seen that since the convertible series or when Brad <laughs> took off the roof of his car a few months ago, but wow, you don't really see that happen that much, but it was crazy. No. There was a lot of trucks that had like a curved windshield on top and it just, it, it looked so weird. Yeah. Allegedly the 41 truck was hit by some debris. So they're saying, and caused that roof mount to fit but like twitter was a buzz just like oh, look at all these trucks they're all cheating up the windshields yeah and and letting them suck in release some of that pressure that's coming off the windshield but i guess his specifically was a uh was was a debris issue and that was that was a really weird picture it really shows you though interesting look at how little there is between the driver and the pavement if if they were to flip over or something like it was just that thin little piece of metal and then some some roll cage and then his head, yeah. which you don't think about it. You don't get to see that too much. No, it kind of puts it into reality. It's just like, whoa. Yeah. Man. 
man, these guys are like that close to death. It's insane. Yeah, and there's a they're on uh they're just driving little cages with with thin sheet metal on the side of it, and then they could come apart just like that, which is that's interesting to see because you don't see that every day. Yeah, well, pretty cool to see, but yeah, another a weird caution. For um, sure. And then Kyle Bush does Kyle Bush things. It doesn't matter if he sold KBM or not. He goes on to win in that seven spire truck, the team that bought out KBM. So I think it's pretty cool. This guy's still able to do what he can, especially with, I'd say spire is one of the up and coming teams right now. So he's really putting them on the map for the truck series. For sure. Spire is building a base. They, they obviously, we see that with their investment in the cup series last year and their investment in the truck series, buying KBM and, and outfitting all that. And who better than Kyle Bush to come sit in your equipment, tell you what you need. I mean, he's run, he's owned the truck shop for the past, however many years and he can come back. And I think Kyle was happy to have the pressure off of him. He's just getting in the truck. And then at the end of the day, he gets to hang up the helmet and go back home to his family, not worry about the truck. So that's good. Kyle, I guess, didn't know after Daytona that he was running this truck, but he just sort of asked him last minute. So that's kind of a cool situation. Um, and uh, yeah, it's 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 just a good spot for him. I think it's good for him to be able to to leave it behind and just go back out and try to run and get some some seat time. Yeah, man, definitely. And we'll see him next week for Vegas. All right, so let's move on to the Xfinity series. And Jesse Love, he is a qualifying machine, uh, sitting on the pole once again, two weeks in a row. Uh, this guy really knows how to get it done with these super speedway qualifying rounds. Um, I think we should check job. him. Check him for a webbed glove. Yeah, right. <laughs> but the kid is good. He is making a name for himself immediately in the Xfinity series. Because uh, then he went on to win stage one. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know, it was it was just kind of single file this whole race. No one really wanted to try anything. They kind of saw what happened in the truck series and they just kind of wanted to back off. I I don't know if it was that they didn't want to try anything, but I just, I, I truly don't think that these cars were capable and same with the trucks. I don't think they were capable of, of this type of racetrack. It's, it's short, it's fast and it, and it, just the way that everything reacts there was no way to get too wide there. Kyle Busch was kind of brute forcing it in the truck series. And he that's why he was able to get to the front. And then nobody's able to pass him because nobody had the confidence to make a move. And and I think we saw the similar thing with, with the Xfinity race. It's just like you got in line and nobody had the confidence to do something. And the people that did have the confidence to do something would pull out a line, get sucked into the sucker hole, and go all the way back to whatever line they were in. Uh, it was really frustrating to watch the whole day. Yeah, it was really, really disappointing, and it just made us just not look forward to this Cup Series race, but we'll get into that. Kyle Weatherman spins J.J. Yaley, and then his crew chief proceeds to put Weatherman into a headlock, and we, we talked uh, we talked about that a little bit, but Jesse Love wins Stage 2. I mean, this guy is just freaking good. Well, we, knew, we knew with – even with – the Arca series being the Arca series. We knew that Jesse love was someone special with mm-hmm. how dominant he was at some of those races. Um, and there's a reason RCR went and grabbed him and, and plucked him out of the Toyota pipeline because they also saw it was special. And now we got to watch Jesse love hone in his craft. He's there's been a couple series, a couple instances with last week at Daytona and this week at Atlanta where he's made some questionable rookie decisions, but it, this is what, the series is for the names are made here series. He is going to learn and he is going to get better. He's going to win a race or two with the way he's shown up. And uh, granted it's hard to make such speculations, be it. We only had Daytona and new Atlanta, um, but he looks good. And if he keeps running up front, he'll be, he'll learn a lot more. Oh yeah. So has a lot of growing to do and yeah, he'll, he'll learn this year for sure. But this race was, Pretty boring up until the end when everyone was run out of gas. Um, yes. We had uh, Cole Custer point, run out of gas. Yeah, he, point being with Jesse Love, they asked him on the radio, and Denny highlighted this in his podcast, but they asked him on the radio. They're like, 
they're like, you got to save. He goes, no, I done enough. I saved enough. And he didn't <laughs> come wrong. in the pit. He didn't fill it up. And as soon as he took the green flag, he had to pull over. Like, that's the kind of thing he said. Overcom- How does he know he saved enough? He's been in this car twice now. Right. Physically. Uh, it's 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 one of those things. Yeah. The, the fuel mileage thing at the end of this was kind of silly. And I think it takes away from a race like this where you expect them to run in packs and they're all going to start running to gas. Like if this is old Atlanta and you got them running out of fuel, ooh, give me that all day long. Love that. You you don't know the guy's got a 17 second lead, but he could run out of gas and the people behind him start dropping out. Like that's interesting. That's exciting. Um, this was this was kind of weird. And then the the caution came out with overtime and the fact that people stayed out at all was <laughs> yeah really ugh. screw themselves. Yeah. But guess who Austin Hill wins again on a super speedway? I mean this guy. He, He's just good, and he he got lucky with his teammate run out of gas because Jesse Love had this thing in the bag. Um, but yeah, Austin Hill two wins in a row to start the season. This guy's on another tear. Yeah, and that's that again shows the experience. It shows why he chose to stay in the Xfinity series. Um, he could have taken a colleague car this year, probably in Cup series, and gone and run middle of the pack. But he's down here winning races already, and. uh it's it shows again the experience between him and his teammate. One runs out of gas, loses his chance at almost a surefire win, and this guy is able to come in and sweep it up. Yep. So it really shows the veteran status of Austin Hill. I think hey. I'm getting hail. Yeah. Yeah. We were getting <laughs> hounded yeah, there's by a, hail. a huge line of storms coming through Chicago yeah. right now. So. But well, let me I'm know if you got to take any... shelter. No, I'm sitting next to a window, but I'm like sandwiched in between buildings, so I don't think it. I'll I'll be all right. Yeah, you should be fine. I'll have some good internet content if my window blows out. Yeah, make a good highlight reel. <laughs> all right, my my racing computer, my like the computer I built the sim for, is right here next so, to the window. So I don't know if I want to have the open window on my first floor apartment. Just shield with it rain, with your body. Rainstorm coming through here, and then thieves. Gonna come just lift my rig out the window. <laughs> right. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh my god. I just come home and it's gone. I'd be like <laughs> how? Yeah, <laughs> Why? I'd, I'd, honestly, I'd be impressed. I'd be yeah. impressed. <laughs> All righty. So let's move on to the cup series. And mm. Michael McDowell earns his first career pull in over 360 starts for the NASCAR Cup series. Um I'm I'm a little surprised because we know that this guy is a hell of a super speedway driver. Uh, he's usually kind of starting up there uh, with the Daytona 500, but hey, he got his, he got a front row start for the 500, and now he earns a pull. He's on to a hell of a start for the 2024 season. Yeah, I mean, front row is living up to their name, especially with the Joey Logano stuff. Todd Gillen moved up, and they were <laughs> all front row, front row motorsports. Um, and everybody's saying, oh, well, this is because of the Penske alliance but michael mcdowell is saying to reporters this week that that stuff hasn't even really kicked in yet they're getting all the information but they're not knowing what to do with it so if you told me six years ago front row motorsports is going to be a top contender leading the most laps in races getting poles in front rows often i'd be like what landing castle what matt like, tiff what, ta- <laughs> like, what are you talking about you're nuts um but it, oh, that's the experience again with Mike McDowell. He's been here long enough. About time he starts getting a chance to actually show what he can do. Yeah, for real. So good for front row. They're stepping it up. They don't even have the Penske support yet. So I can't wait to see what for they sure. do when that actually kicks in because so far the Ford teams, they've been kicking ass lately, uh, except they've for Stuart Haas. <laughs> fast, but yeah. Chevy's been winning. Chevy yeah. won eight of the nine last nine races between the three series. So yeah, they got to put it together mm-hmm. at the end, but front row is my Ford team. They're my buddies over there. They sent me a pit shirt. I'm still grateful for them. Absolutely, <laughs> man. Hey, got to love it when the team yeah. shows support to that's, the fans. That's my Ford team. I didn't have a Ford team. So, and I was pulling for them before they were cool, man. I'll just say that because Michael McDowell didn't win until after the street race. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So I'm, Speaking of front row, caution on lap two for Todd Gillen being a dumbass and lifting in the tri-oval. 
and just causing an accordion effect, piling everyone up on lap two, taking multiple drivers out, including Noah Gregson, who just, he was limping for a few laps and they said, put it in the garage. We're done. Mm. Uh, Just a rough start. To a really good race, though, I thought that like once we saw this wreck, we're like, okay, it's going to be single file, it's going to be terrible. But next thing you know, we got cars that are going four wide for the lead, three wide. Yeah. It's absolutely insane. I did not expect to see this kind of racing at Atlanta Motor Speedway. They they just well, went balls out, and they did not care that there was a wreck in the beginning, and no no one was scared. Well, here's the, here's the other thing, and this is something that the uh, the blessings and the curse of the next gen car. You have a 16 car wreck on lap two, and you have 30, 30 total cars, maybe more than 30 cars of the 37 involved in incidents in the race. And and they all fit, they're all finishing. Like you don't wreck 16 cars on lap two and have that many guys finish on the lead lap. Like, it just doesn't make sense. And that's the durability of the next check. Like, Denny Hamlin, when he gets, we'll get to this later, but he he gets caught up in that end of stage two wreck and drives right up the back of Chris Busher, and he comes out in stage three and starts leading the race. Like, not a problem. It's <laughs> his whole hood looked like it was full. Like, and, and so that's the interesting part about this next-gen car and this Atlanta pack is that these cars can take a little bit of a beating. I mean, you, the Gen 6... All those cars would have minor bumps and the arrow would be fucked and they'd be done. You'd have 10 cars leaving the race of that 16 car crash. Um, so that's that's good. And it gave the fans a much better race to watch with leaving all those guys in the race and the ability to not only have them in the race. There's no room on that track for guys to just limp around. There's not even really space for them to pull off the track. So for the, those cars to be able to survive pretty darn big hits and still come up and make speed is really impressive. Yeah, it was really cool to see. Um, yeah, like you said, a few years ago with the Gen 6 car, they just slapped the wall, they're done. It's killed. Yeah, it's killed. It's but... my, fav- my driver's favorite phrase. <laughs> it's killed, and then you go on to win the fucking race. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but uh, massive pile of biggest mm. wreck in Atlanta Motor Speedway what was... history. Okay, I'm... I'm annoyed by all of those. Oh, this is the biggest wreck in Atlanta speed history. Oh, this is the most lead change. It's a super speed. It's a completely different racetrack. Yeah. I, I'm sure that people were talking the same thing when they added that tri oval to it, the dog legs, the double dog leg to it. Cause it used to just be like a straight oval. And then they added the double dog leg. Yeah. Now they made it super. It's a different racetrack. You can't be comparing it, apples and oranges. In my opinion, I think that's silly. Yeah, exactly. But it's just crazy to think of a, 16 car pile up on a mile and a half track like that's just insane but it was bound to happen with this kind of racing on a small track like that well and it that also lap two biggest wreck of the night like yeah we saw some other larger pileups but for what those guys were pulling off later in the race to not have another 20 cars wadded up in a wreck was amazing yeah absolutely showed off why they're in the cup series and why they're mm-hmm. able to race like they're this the best without wrecking. stock car drivers in the world yep fantastic all righty uh so yeah we had denny hamlin spinning after not clearing himself over kyle bush went into the grass no damage he was able to continue uh um, I'm, I'm glad denny was a good sport about it and he called himself he's like, i thought i was clear and he talked about it later he goes i tried to watch i watched it a billion times couldn't figure out what the heck happened but just not blaming Kyle. Um, I I didn't see anything wrong with what Kyle did. It just seemed like two guys taking a little bit separate lines and ended up in the same spot. So, yep, it's just a racing deal. Yeah. All right, and then Michael McDowell. He was able to win stage one. Great points for him. And then we had the pile up with Logano, Busher, and Hamlin. Logano, man, we have a lot of bad blocks throughout this entire yeah. weekend. Logano just making a horrible block over Chris Busher, takes himself out. Denny piles into him, uh, pretty mm-hmm. much hurts the 17 car. He isn't able to contend for anymore uh, for the win. And Denny Hamlin, like you said, he was able to just take off and keep going and go for the lead. It was absolutely. That was a big hit too for yeah. him. Like it wasn't. It wasn't soft. He didn't just like roll up on it. I don't know what Logano was doing there. He says he was plowing tight. He was covering his ass. He was. He was a. It's a terrible block. Yep. And whatnot. And again, like 
He's sitting now 31st in points with 18 points. He's got one more point than David Reagan has. And David Reagan ran the Daytona <laughs> 500. So like it's the super speedway. I mean, it it's hard. It's hard to talk points this early, mm-hmm. but also you put yourself in a hole like this. You're going to fight. Clint Boyer was saying on the broadcast, you're in a deep hole to start the season. You may not be back out of that hole till the end of the summer. So these these guys, yeah, it's too way too early to talk about points, but the guys at the top of the list are feeling a whole lot better than these guys who are stuck way down in the 20s and 30s. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and that wreck that took Noah out, I mean, that killed him, and then that 35-point mm-hmm. dock killed him too, negative six points. Uh, hey, he's it, just he just wants to consistently stay where he left off last season, yeah, at the very that- bottom of the points. Yeah, that's what I was saying, man. It's we're just He's losing to right JJ Yaley and Josh Williams. <laughs> and Anthony Alfredo and BJ McLeod and Riley Herbst and Ryan Pre Ryan Priest has zero points too. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, he's like 36, I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's rough. It says negative six here. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Noah's got negative six. You know. Not good. 43rd in points. I think I think Briscoe was worse off last year. Yeah. Or some somebody somebody was way deep in the negatives. Yeah, I remember like someone a, got a pretty hefty penalty to start the off the year. So. Yeah. Alrighty. And we had Elliot self spinning, Kozlowski self spinning as well. Um, I think they might have just had some tires go down or something, but uh they were both able mm-hmm. to not I mean, Elliot's car was fucked up. Yeah. The he... whole day. Yeah. And and the fact that he even brought that thing home across the finish line was nuts yeah pretty amazing uh kozlowski collected larson and lajoy uh lajoy he was looking pretty damn good throughout this Mm -hmm. race yeah for sure and then we had josh berry getting loose hitting carson hosevar uh and he made a pretty funny meme about it he said "Ah, i turned into the hover car (laughs) (laughs) that inspire motorsports tweeted like hosevar or something yeah right (laughs) yeah that was Kind of like the uh, All Star Race crash between Chastain and Bush, where Chastain just ramped off the car. That it's kind of scary that a car can get airborne just from like that. Yeah. Right. All right, and then man, the third closest finish in NASCAR Cup Series history came down to Kyle Busch making a ballsy ass move going oh, into turn goodness. three. Uh, really, it was just so tight in between Suarez and Blaney and Kyle Busch. Like, make room for me. Yeah, I don't know where Blaney was going down in the backstretch, but he like he went further down to the the double line, and Kyle's like, okay, you're gonna give me that space. I'm gonna try to go in there, and then they get onto three, and I think Bubba was trying to follow Blaney, and he got too low. If you watch the replay again, and there's people that overanalyze this, yeah, but, slides but you watch the replay. I think he gets down on the apron. Like he puts a wheel on the line and he loses grip and he has to lift. And I Mm -hmm. think that's what created that finish. Cause when he lifts, he starts coming up. I forget who it was following Suarez, but now he lifts cause he sees Bubba slide up. And now you just have those three cars and nobody's pushing them. And that's what created our finish. That's why nobody could really get the edge around the corner. And it was just a drag race. Yeah, absolutely. Insane. Phenomenal battle. We were Mm -hmm. up and screaming at the TV. We did not know who won. But, man, Daniel Suarez wins, possibly saves his job, too, because he's on a contract year right now. Yeah. Um, absolutely phenomenal to see for him and to just win in a crazy photo finish like that. And it made NASCAR go viral for the past for few sure. days, too. Um, they had it on the ESPN Top 10. It was just talked about everywhere. So it's it just something amazing about those to track house see. boys pulling wild wild stuff yeah um, i'd say man all right imagine this scenario we get we're getting down to the end of the year and you got a lot of winners you got a lot of diverse winners suddenly you're getting down to the bubble race and kyle bush and ryan blaney still don't have a win and they're out imagine if kyle bush and ryan blaney missed the playoffs by seven one thousandths of a second yeah that's that's wild to me and i'm gonna think about that until either of those guys win a race this year. Um, that's scary. That's yeah. scary. And and you tell me, you're like, wow, seven one thousandth of a second, that's close finish between first and second. You're like, no, 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 no. 
That's first and that's third. First and third. There's another <laughs> car in between there. <laughs> and that's, that's nuts. Three one thousandths yeah. of a second. It's absolutely yeah. nuts. And that there was just like three cars that were that close mm-hmm. to winning the race, but only one of them did. And yeah, Tom, like you said, like can you imagine if Blaney or Bush do not make They're, it yeah. into the playoffs just because of three one thousandths or seven one thousandths of a second? That, I, put, I tweeted that, that after mind. the race. I tweeted that after the race. I was like, imagine if Blaney and Bush missed the playoffs. What could have been mm-hmm. tonight? And again, if you go back to Suarez, incredible for him. Because, I mean, you get you get further along in the season, and Suarez, we'd consider a bubble driver. He's there. He's good enough to make the playoffs on points, but he's really got to be consistent and whatnot. And you got to imagine the pressure of being a bubble driver without a win as the season goes along. Will toll on you. I think we could see Suarez win two or three times just because in the regular season, just because he will have this win behind him, they can be a little bit gutsier with strategy calls and put themselves in the right position to just go win races and go win stages and just now start racking up the points because they're in. They don't need to perform anymore. Um, and yeah, nobody knew he was on a contract either, but everybody's like, his performance has not been matching his team and i know he's been a journeyman um justin mark said he wasn't going anywhere but that's a lot easier to say after he you're you're in the media center because your driver won the race so yeah exactly but and it was a popular win too all the drivers they got out of their cars they're like man congrats to daniel that's really cool we're happy for that guy um and just like he's a popular win Oh yeah, he's, he's a popular figure. We need people like Daniel Suarez in the sport, um, and it's just good. I think that that adds to the lore of this whole race is that Daniel Suarez was ultimately the guy that came on top. I, I mean, imagine if this was Denny Hamlin and I don't know Blaney and somebody else, some other like even if Denny Hamlin is there and takes this over Blaney and Bush, like. People are like, oh man, that was cool, but it sucks that Denny won. Right. Um kind of like kind of like uh Indianapolis last year, where it's like, well, it was compelling because Michael McDowell won and you have Chase Elliott chasing him and he really needed the win. Like the the characters involved play a huge role in this too. Oh yeah, big time. Um, and just huge for Daniel's amigos. They've been wanting that win yeah. for a very, very long time, ever since he won at Sonoma two mm-hmm. years ago. And yeah, finally came and it made a lot of people happy. And I just love to see it for that fan base. For sure. And Sonoma was its own thing. That was a dominant, really well-run race. This is, he wasn't around most of the time and then he just kind of shows up at the end. Um, so you you still want to see if he can keep that consistency when we go to our more generic tracks. Um, but again, he's got that confidence and he's got that momentum and, and that, that, that safety net of having the win already is going to open up his options all year round. Yeah, absolutely. And also speaking of track house, I forgot to mention this Shane Van Gisbergen third place on Saturday night in the Xfinity series, a top five. What a great way to start off the season for him. He's looking yeah. great in these super speedway races. Mm-hmm. It looks like he's adjusting well to this Xfinity series car. Again, it's super speedway. Who knows how I'll do at Vegas? Yep. It's a different animal. I know they all look the same. I know we got our cookie cutter tracks, but these ovals and the lines you take and how you treat your tires and and how you get through traffic, it's it's gonna be interesting to see. I think the real Shane Vingisbergen test starts this week. Yeah, he's he's riding around in packs for the past two days. Mm-hmm. Taking taking what he can get. I mean, he got wrecked out of Arca really early at Daytona. He got in a couple incidents at Daytona again but he's if i look at my list here if we're going back to xfinity real quick um where's my xfinity there it is points wise he's sitting ninth so solid start to the season and again yeah. but that's that's the safety nets you want to look for you want to have somebody like that and he's not having to just also worry about digging himself out of a points hole as the season starts, he's up there. He's in the top 10. He's in contention and he can just go out and try to learn and get good results. Yeah. Good way to start your season is with a bunch of confidence. For sure. I think um, just the Atlanta race in general, we saw Mm -hmm. 
a lot of what we've been wishing we could see at Daytona and Talladega. Like the gutsy moves that these guys are really made really able to make and whatnot. And people, if they were in the back of the pack, you could see them work their way up to the front. Um, I'm biased towards Kyle Bush, but I know like he had a speeding penalty. He was caught back in the back, got his lap back and he was starting in the back. And he, I was watching him up the, the ticker. He was able to work his way through traffic. And so this Atlanta track with this next gen car is what we want these super speedways to look like. And it's just, because everything's been happening faster and whatnot the, the, at the bigger tracks, the air is working a lot different on these cars. You can't build the runs. You can't confidently make moves. Um, and that's why this race was so compelling. It's, and these drivers were having fun. They were all getting out of the car. Even the guys that wrecked out the Kyle Larson outside of the, the uh, infield care center was talking. He's like, this is the most fun I've ever had at a drafting speedway track. For sure. And he's he's wrecked out. He's finishing last or so. Not last, right. last, but last. Um, and I think it's important that these guys are able to, to be able to make moves and actually control their destiny. So while I don't think this was a good move overall for Atlanta, who knows how this track ages and whatnot. And this is going to be some something wacky in two, three years when that asphalt starts to get old like it has mm -hmm. in Atlanta's past. Um but for the Cup Series, this racing is incredible. And you yeah. thought last year when Junior was talking about it, you thought it was just because the rain was coming, but they raced hard all race long. Fantastic. Yep. Absolutely phenomenal racing. I I was so against them doing the whole reconfiguration. I was at the last race before they did it. Yeah. And I just, I hated to see it go because it just, it was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But then I went to the first race where they had the super speedway package at Atlanta Motor Speedway, and I was absolutely blown away. I thought it was awesome. It was so different. And, man, I cannot wait to see this race in the playoffs in September. Yeah. It first is going to be race. absolutely nuts. For sure. For sure. I wish they did it to Texas. Yeah, me too. You know, they, they've... but. And, I think and... we need to leave Atlanta as its own beast because mm -hmm. I feel like if we do this to more mile and a half, it's just going to ruin the well, whole. Yeah, if you do this, and... if you do this to Texas now, it's it's just trying to copy, and everybody's going to have expectations, and it's Texas, so it's still going to probably be terrible. Yeah, <laughs> whatever you do to that place, um, but it makes you. We're going to be watching the Texas race later in the spring and be like, oh, I wish this were like the Atlanta race. This sucks, but. Uh, we have to be careful what we wish for because you know we see one thing we start gravitating towards it nascar spins that and then suddenly we're going to 19 we're, super speedways we're doing here. rovals all over again doing a yeah, bunch and of that shit. we've we're we're doing super speedways and road course racing mm -hmm. nothing else so we have to be careful but this this race was damn good it was absolutely phenomenal tom um yeah, and like I said, can't wait to see it in the playoffs. And we got Vegas next week, so I think we're going to leave it there. Um, but, guys, thanks for tuning in to the Stock Car Spectacle. Again, make sure to check out our Vegas preview that will be coming out in a few days. And make sure to check us out on Twitter and Instagram for updates. So for the Stock Car Spectacle, I'm Ian Jordson. I'm Tom Hopley. And we'll see you guys next time.